Welcome back, friends, to the shop on this very rainy Monday morning. We got a whole bunch of snow last week, and then the warm weather moved in, and now we're in flood, st flood stage. Stay tuned to the end of the video. I'll show you, I'll, I'll take you down the river and show you uh, how high everything is. All right, so in today's video, we're going to be turning this Pelican 1485 into the ultimate backcountry survival kit, right? So I went snow biking for the first time, big time, you know, outside of my yard up on uh, Mount Fuji this weekend. And as I, I suspected, it's about the, one of the funnest things I've ever done. But that is an austere and dangerous environment. And there's no one that's gonna save you if you get into trouble. So it really, really pressed home on me the importance of having the equipment that you need at hand in a, in a way that you can carry it and get to it quickly. So we're going to start with uh, this case today. Now, I didn't know that Pelican made a lightweight series case. This is perfect because weight is everything, of course, on these bikes or what you're carrying on your back. And what I found that I had too much weight in my back with my uh, beacons and my shovel and my avalanche probe and all, all that stuff, it was just, it was burdensome. So I want to get it off of me and onto the bike and this is going to be the key today. What we want to do is we want to mount this box very securely on, on top of this carbon fiber tunnel. Now I got to digging around and I found out Yeti builds this beautiful bracket here designed just for that. Now when we had the, when I had the bike spec'd out, we put the front of the mount, fortunately, on here um, to help hold the fuel bladder here. So this is half the battle, right? So I'm piecing this together. I'm waiting on one more piece. But that, essentially, what this, this, this frame is going to set in here, this is very, very light. It's beautifully machined. This will pin in here like this, and then we'll put the rear mount in, and this will receive that case, right? Just like this. Here's a close-up of the bracket we have to work with. Now, this is uh, held in placed by these stainless steel, these aviation style pins, so that if you want to take the case off, you simply pull those two pins and the whole thing comes off with the rack. So you can get that weight off there if you don't want it. So all in all, everything fits very nicely. We have, um, we're perfect, almost perfect from front to back. We have maybe a half inch right there. Problem runs into the back where these uh, ribs, they come in conflict with the angle on the side there and won't let it drop down. So first thing we need to do is to remove that material so that sits flush. Then I've got this piece of um, inch and a half by quarter aluminum strap that will make, <clears throat> excuse me, make four tabs and bolt on here that will stick out there and pick up the case. Because the problem that we, the problem we're running into is I don't think we're going to be able to go directly into the case because of those rounded edges. You know, they, they, they radius up, and to get a bolt in there, it's going to sit on the corner. It's not going to be right, and there wouldn't be anywhere to waterproof, keep it waterproof. This might be a better angle for you to see. So the front sits down just fine, sits on the bottom, and this one here, of course, is held up by the ridges. So that's a half inch up. So that's basically what we need to relieve. I'm having a hard time figuring out how to clamp this thing down. I have an idea. How about we put 50 pounds of steel in there? <laughs> that'll, that'll settle it down for us. Well, that went pretty good. We'll take the four in hand rasp here, see if we can't Clean that up a little bit. Let's see how this fits now. Okay, so we're sitting. Oh, I got a little carried away there, didn't I? Well, it's done, it's done sitting on there flat now. Okay, so let's figure out how we're gonna mount this guy. Okay, so this is what we've got to work with here. I've got about 13 inches of this uh, flat bar. Here's what I'm thinking. If we bolted four tabs on, we'll cut these. If we cut those at three inches, do we have enough? We might have to use that hole right there. We're so tight. Yeah, three, six, nine, 12 inches. So if we cut these, these tabs at three inches, and basically bolt it through here. 
bolt it to the case. One, two, three, four. I think that that will be pretty strong. All right, friends, what are our options here? I want this all the way to the front. So I was thinking of putting them right here on those recesses, those little feet, but that's gonna lift the box up even higher. I think I overcut. I really didn't need to cut that much out. I should have kind of thought this through. What if we did this? What if we just went along, alongside that ridge here, here, and the same here. And drill that where that comes out. Any chance this hole is going to line up to anything? Okay, let's drill some holes here. Sometimes you just got to go with it. Let's see how our tabs worked out. I This side here, I made that hole a little bit bigger so that we had a, you know, of course, we could adjust it a little bit. Now, this is not the hardware that I'm going to use. I'm going to use stainless steel with nylock uh, so it doesn't corrode and it doesn't come loose. But I'll pick those up at the hardware store later. I don't have those on me. But we'll just use this right now to fit everything. Well, you live and learn. As high as that got raised up by that quarter inch bar, I wouldn't need to cut, I probably wouldn't have needed to even cut that. But, uh, well, I learned my lesson slow. Okay, I think that looks pretty good, guys. We've got our four holes there laid out. I want to make sure everything is fitting properly. We're slid to the back so we don't have any necessarily any unnecessary rubbing. Okay, I think the guys probably were just best off just to go ahead and just run that drill bit right through there and uh, use that as a template. Well, friends, I've got to say that was a pretty good solution all in all, except for the bonehead move of overcutting those hinges, which were completely unnecessary. I probably wouldn't have even needed to touch it. <laughs> well, learn from my mistake. But uh, we have a good solid mount there um, using kind of what we had, uh, heavy aluminum. It's up against uh, these ribs here, so it's, it, it's going to be difficult for it to spin, yeah. Be nice to have four bolts on there, but it's just not necessary. I'm not putting that much weight in here. This is actually very, very light. These uh, Pelican air cases are 40% lighter than the normal ones, but they, they don't feel flimsy. I mean, they definitely feel lighter. I mean, this whole unit right here is so light, it doesn't hardly weigh anything. I mean, just a couple of pounds. Yeah, that'll be nice and clean, and we'll do the we'll do that same type of screw. So I'm gonna go to the hardware store and get stainless all stainless uh, hardware, as well as uh, some rubber 
uh, washers uh, to waterproof that. As w and I'm going to put some rubber. I'll isolate the pl between the plastic and the aluminum. I'll put rubber on the bottom of there as well, just so it doesn't rub uh, or squeak or anything. So, yeah, that's it. Let's put it on the bike and see how it looks. And then we'll uh, see where we'll head down down to the river and look at the flood. Now this will mount. It snaps right into this mount here. And then I'm only waiting on that rear mount. And then these pins will go through that. So every, that should go pretty quickly. This was, um, this was hard, it uh, was been out of stock. Uh, and yet he's gonna send me one. I, I've uh, talked to them last week, uh, might be here tomorrow. And then we'll put that on. But that'll essentially just go in, snap in. The stainless pins will lock it into place. If you don't want it, or if you want to take it off, for example, you just pull those two pins and the whole thing comes off with the handle. So this will be excellent, excellent, just to get that extra stuff on there. One thing I did learn uh, about my first uh, snow biking trip is uh, I need to bring more gasoline. I only had an extra gallon on in this bag. Um, I probably bring two and a half gallons uh, to three. So I'm gonna have to look at that as well. I could put another gallon in here with my emergency equipment. I tried that last night, but uh, this would be a good solution right here. Um, I, I feel good about it. So that's it. All right, let's head on down to the river and uh, we'll see what's going on down there. Oh, it is pretty high. A lot of water coming through here. This is probably twice as much water as normally flows through this. I don't think I showed you after we got it all uh, cleared out here. Dry and I worked down here as well as Mrs. W a little bit. And I've got a beach front beachhead started, and this is going to be the beginning of our project. It's uh, starting probably maybe tomorrow, this week anyway. More on that coming up, but that looks a lot better. All right. Well, a lot of folks were asking about uh, if this, if we we're concerned about this flooding uh, the home. Uh, we're not. Uh, I've talked to guys that have lived here long, long time, five generations or families, and they said it doesn't flood, doesn't really get much higher than this right here. So we've got a long ways to go before it gets to our house. Well, friends, that's about all the time we have for today. But tomorrow we're uh, going into town and we're going to be talking with a Buck uh, who runs the uh, Wood Stove Emporium. He's a very interesting guy. He probably knows more about wood stoves than anyone in the country or as much as anyone in the country. He's gonna help us pick out the right one for the shop, as well as a couple other different things we have going on. But uh, you'll wanna definitely see that. He is, uh, he's a great guy, he's, a good, he's quite a character. Uh, we've bought our stoves from him in the past and he's really, uh, he's nice, nice guy. Before he uh, sells you a stove, he sits down and, and he talks to you and gets to know you a little bit. Uh, asks about where it's gonna go, gives recommendations and really understands the importance of a wood stove and how the hearth is kind of the heart of the home and wants to make sure you're happy with with what you get and I like that it takes a long time so if you go see Buck uh, set, <laughs> set half a day aside because he, he's got a lot of uh, information to share and stories but uh, he's a good guy and uh, Lord willing we'll go see him uh, tomorrow so that's it thanks for watching may God bless you and your families we've got some uh, fun stuff coming up we're uh, going to do our best to fight, push back against or fight against the, uh, the lockdowns and um, not, not allow that to separate our families and friends and their ability to, to get together and to enjoy one another. Um, you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. So thanks for watching. Keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families. And we'll see you guys on the next video.